kind of a fun project today on Grim 3D that has to do with these. Stick around. So quite a few days ago, my daughter comes to me with an idea that she found maybe online or in a magazine of a piece of wall art that was 3D printed, or could at least be 3D printed. So today on Grim 3D, we're going to talk about how we made wall art on the 3D printer. The design idea she came with took the form of a simple pencil drawing, grabbed my notebook, started cranking out squares, which gave me the basic concept, and then I started work. The idea was to print similar squares of various sizes, all in white, and then layer them together in a random pattern to create a multi-level 3D wall sculpture. We decided to do this in white because the wall she has in her room is dark blue. So I jumped on my computer and I headed over to Design Spark Mechanical. So once in Design Spark Mechanical, I just created a bunch of squares that would print inside each other on a single print bed. Because my Monoprice Maker Select Plus has the smaller of the two print beds, I designed it specifically for that, which means that Prusa Diffusa could print it just fine as well, uh, because the Prusa has a bigger print bed to begin with. To figure out the sizes, I really just guessed. I made the, each one of the squares 10 millimeters wide and it is pulled up to five millimeters thick. A program like Design Spark Mechanical makes it exceptionally easy uh, to create geometric shapes and give them thickness. So that's why I decided to use Design Spark Mechanical for this particular project. Once I had these squares down and I had them exported as STLs, I moved them into my slicer, I gave him a 0.2 millimeter slice and started printing. And I printed a bunch. Once we had an overall layout that we liked, it was time to go ahead and start gluing it together. For gluing it, we just used super glue. We used some clips, had a chance to move some stuff around. We didn't really want to change the design a whole lot, so you'll see the picture of the final layout on the phone right there. It's being referred to time and again as these have to be moved in and out and around. We did find out that keeping them lined up Horizontal vertical alignment was very, very difficult. That was one of the hardest parts, was keeping everything where it belonged and keeping it all lined up. However, after what seemed like hours and hours, we were finally done. So there you have it. Fully 3D printed wall art. Even though the original idea came from a picture found online, when we went to look, we couldn't find exactly what we were looking for. So we actually created our own from the ground up, team effort. So to wrap up this project, uh, what did I really think about it? Well, first of all, you'll notice that as we went through the process, ideas changed. They almost always do when you're doing a project like this, so be ready for change. I thought it was pretty simple. I mean, we pulled out off the 3D printer some really simple objects and turned it into something quite nice. So that's kind of neat. Uh, it was not expensive. 
it took less than what I had left over on one spool of white filament. So it was pretty cheap, worked pretty well. We did try specifically to build it in a way that it could be hung any direction. We kind of wanted it hung horizontally, but we actually ended up putting it on the wall upside down from what was originally designed because when it was all said and done, we thought it looked better that way. Simple as that. Because the wall paint in the bedroom was brand new, we decided to hang this sculpture to the wall with command strips. So they'd be hidden behind there, not destroy the paint, not have to poke any holes in it, not damage anything. If we decided we didn't like it where we put it, we could actually remove it and replace it. Command strips are pretty good for that. So that worked out pretty well. So uh, what was the hardest part about this project? I'd have to say probably waiting for these little suckers to print. Each one of the beds of these, because of the size of them and the fact that there were multiples on the bed, each time I printed these took about eight hours on the print. And I did slice it at 0.2 millimeters. I print this PLA at about 210 degrees with the bed at 50. Everything went really well. It just took a lot of time. I think that even though it was difficult, deciding on the actual layout was one of the hardest problems, but it was one of the most fun. So that was kind of interesting that it ended up being a pretty difficult problem, but we had a good time with that. By far the hardest part that I wouldn't really want to do again was, would be gluing it all together. The super glue is not super easy to work with. You gotta be really careful not to glue yourself to your piece of art. And drying times are always kind of an unknown. Sometimes when you're using super glue, if you get the uh, amount of super glue exactly right, it seals almost immediately. And then you better hope it was in the right place. But sometimes if you get a little too much super glue on there, it doesn't seal for quite a while. So you end up standing there and holding it or clipping it with, uh, we used a, some metal clips to do that with, but that was kind of not fun, actually. It wasn't very much fun. So what would I do differently? I don't know, let me check. If I had to do this project again, there's a couple of things I would do with the design itself. Um, I would probably make the squares bigger. 10 millimeters was okay, but in a lot of places where they crossed at random angles, um, they didn't glue very stable. There just wasn't a big enough patch to glue them. In fact, we had to rearrange our design a little bit to give it a little bit of extra strength and make some of the pieces uh, line up a little bit better. The super glue is tough, but the plastic is, is pretty flexible when it's in large squares like that, but they're pretty thin. And remember, it was only five millimeters thick and 10 millimeters wide. Along those same lines as making the squares bigger, if they were actually thicker, we would be able to cast more shadows on the wall, which was one of our goals, was to use the white and the blue and the cast shadow and all of that contrast and light play as it changed throughout the day to create different varying, almost living sculpture on the wall, even though it's static. Lastly, in the end, it probably could have been bigger. It was actually, it ended up being about four feet wide and about two feet tall. But I think we could have gone at least five or six feet wide and it would have been even more dramatic. It would have been even better on the wall in the room where it was being placed. <clears throat> all in all, it was a really fun project. I'm super glad we did it. It pretty much looks exactly like we expected it to. We stuck with the random strategy so that we could place things wherever we wanted. We just needed to make them even and balanced and it seems to have worked out pretty well. So that's it for this episode of Grim 3D. Subscribe, smash that like button, ring the bell, and we'll see you out there. Oh wait, you probably want to see what it looks like. We'll close with that.